Have you ever driven by a roadside sign or a historical spot and you wondered what it was, but you just didn't get out of the car, you didn't stop because it was in an inconvenient place? That's called drive-by history. And today, we're here at Fort Hayes for drive-by history with History of the Waffles. Now between August and September, Fort Hayes was constructed out here at this site. And it was after the Union had a victory at the Second Battle of Weldon Railroad. This place is kind of sandwiched between some, um, some tree lines and roads out here. And it is preserved in its current state. Um, most of it is non-accessible though because you have to get through some pretty heavy brush and it's right next to a lot of housing. There is a unique sign that's out here. Um, Preservation courtesy of Colonel James D. Brady, Camp 63, Sons of Union Veterans. So that's that's pretty neat to see. And you can still see the structure from the roadside if you walk out just far enough. Now this fort out here was named after General Alexander Hayes. And typically most forts are named after somebody that has died for the Union side. And it is a posthumous name. Um, this is no different here. So Alexander Hayes was with the Pennsylvania Unit. He fought at the 2nd Manassas and was wounded. He got back with uh, the unit in time and did a tour of Gettysburg. Uh, once he was done with his Gettysburg fight, he made his way south. And he met his maker in the wilderness in 1864 on that Overland campaign that we talked about in previous videos. Uh, he was killed there. So naturally, when they decided on a name for this place, they decided to name it after that man from the Pennsylvania unit, General Alexander Hayes, who had worked his way up to that position in this war. And today, that's where we're at. We're at that Fort Hayes site here in Petersburg, Virginia, uh, about three miles west of the Weldon Railroad site. Now the portion of the fort that we're looking at right there just beyond the sign, that blue sign that's in front, is actually just a corner section where a cannon would have been placed. This fort itself was built up for a 300 man garrison and it was supposed to be able to have um, a, a lot of guns on the inside as well to be able to support the, um, the fight that was happening here. So about four or five cannons. And again, just like with the other forts that we visited in the past, the purpose for this is to strengthen the fortifications down the line, to have a garrison where men can be stationed, and you can shift your men from one section to the next, and then you can also protect the rear. So on the other side of your line, you have men that are working from line to line, doing their jobs, day-to-day -day business of being a soldier, and you're able to protect them by having these fortifications here and then move them up and shift them from one line to the next. And Grant was constantly shifting men around because he was trying to find a weak spot in the Confederate lines those nine months to break through, split the army, and then take all of the supply lines that the Confederates had.
Now, General Hayes, the man that this fort was named after, was not some some rookie that died in combat as a, j a junior officer or something like that. Um, General Hayes was a, a strong veteran. He fought in the Mexican War, um, and he was a West Point graduate in 1844. He came up through the ranks in the United States Army during the American Civil War and achieved the rank of general. Um, when the Civil War began, he was the colonel of the 63rd Pennsylvania, um, the volunteer infantry. He was promoted to Brigadier General on September 29th of 1862 after suffering a severe wound in the Second Battle of Manassas. Uh, Hayes rejoined the Army in 1863 and he was able to fight through the Gettysburg Campaign. Eventually he would make his way south and end up dying at uh, Orange Plank Road in the Battle of the Wilderness in 1864. And as a result of his succumbing to his wounds and dying, uh, they decided to honor him by naming this fort that's out here Fort Hayes. There's not very much left of this particular uh, fortification out here in Petersburg, but there is still one corner of it that's sticking out from the road, and there's a small area that you can pull off and, and check it out for yourself whenever you want to. Well, that certainly was fun taking you out to Fort Hayes um, for another segment of Drive-By History with History with Waffles. Until next time, we'll see you later.